Good afternoon. Welcome to Grace Episcopal Church. It's great to have you with us today. I'm Reverend Charles Ulick. It is good to be with you. Today on this, today we commemorate Philip the deacon uh, from the Acts of the Apostles, which you'll be reading here in a few moments, and his story a little bit. Let us put ourselves in God's gracious and holy presence. We are on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As we his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Page, 320, page 356. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our colic prayer can be found with the scriptural insert for today's service for commemoration of Philip. O oh God, who has made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your Son to preach peace to those who are far off and those who are near. Grant that we, following the example of your servant Philip, may bring your word to those who seek you for the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's sacred words. Our lay reader today is Betty Schuper. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Then the angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go towards the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah, and he asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to uh, get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe this, his generation? for his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Our psalm today is Psalm 67. We will please read this in unison. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity 
and guide all the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Please stand for the gospel on, found on page three in your insert. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. This is from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 through 27. Now on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem and talking with each other about the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing as each, to, to, with each other while you are walking along? They stood still sad looking, they, they, still, they stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have, have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the, our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But, he, but we had hoped he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, women of the group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all the prophets have declared. It is not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory. Then Beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself and all the scriptures. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Lord to you, Christ. Lord Christ. May what I am about to say be in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So today is uh, the commemoration of Philip, the, uh, known as typically as a deacon and an evangelist. We don't know exactly much about uh, Philip uh, because uh, very little is mentioned to us about other than this passage from Acts of the Apostles today. What we do know is that he was a deacon and he did participate as an evangelist with St. Paul. He uh, was a follower of St. Stephen uh, of Samaria and then went to preach in that area and also in the area that we call now South Ga Gaza. In the, uh, he was, as we heard in, our Ga in, our, in Acts of the Apostles today in our first reading, that he was talking with an Ethiopian eunuch as servant to uh, the Ethiopian queen at that period of time. And he was quoting the suffering servant passage from the uh, Old Testament reading from Isaiah that we listened to. It was there that he, would, he was the evangelist that came and, and baptized uh, this young uh, Ethiopian servant. But what we do know is that Paul was using him as well in Caesarea where he ended up at. The Eastern Orthodox Church usually commemorates this day as well as the Anglican Church uh, of Philip. 
on October 11th. In also, we also celebrate it in the rest of other Christian denominations on June 6th. So if you hear about one or the other, it is the same Philip that we are celebrating uh, his life as church communities. What's remarkable about the story in the Acts of the Apostles and Philip is about how we are, he was being an example of being used by God. Now, the story begins with him being asked by an angel to go and approach this Ethiopian eunuch. Imagine that. How many times do we have an, an instinct to say or to pick up the phone or to text someone? Do you do it? Or do you just uh, brush it off as just something being aside? I would encourage you to think about how God speaks to us. It is usually through our subconscious and our dreams that God, in throughout Scripture, tells us these things and how angels or the Holy Spirit is usually using us as instruments to help brighten somebody's day, to let them know that they are not alone, especially which right now anxiety, depression, and loneliness are at its highest peak in our societies around the world due to the pandemic and the isolation of just mental illness. And that is not something to be brushed off as being, oh well, that's somebody else's problem. That is not a problem. And what, Paul, uh, what Philip does today is he ministers and he listens to that gut moment where he believes angels are speaking to him. And he approaches this Ethiopian eunuch a servant of the queen. Imagine all of a sudden taking a break on the long journey and going down to a pool of water and asking to be baptized. A change of a life of was planted and a seed of hope and faith was given to that, that, uh, that, that uh, servant who most likely was a slave. And because he was an Ethiopian, excuse me, because he was a eunuch, most likely he was under duress. We can always be instruments of hope for others. A simple phone call or a text message of bringing someone a little bit of happiness or hope and letting somebody know that they're not forgotten can be a source of planting a seed of faith and of just awakening the heart of another. Let us, by the example of Philip today, Reach out to those who we love, those we know, and maybe those we don't know yet by a kind word and an example of a simple handshake or a hug. Amen. Let us now stand with, in faith as we celebrate God's grace. Turning to our Book of Common Prayer and Prayers of the People, page 388, page 388, Prayers of the People, Form 4, page 388. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, who confess your name and be united in your truth and love and live and together in love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly for the service of others and to the, your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. 
Lord, in your mercy. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Are there other prayers or thoughts or events that are going on in your lives that you would like to mention and offer prayer for? We pray for all those who, uh, those women who are expecting right now and for those uh, who are giving a delivery today uh, for a, a new baby. We pray in thanksgiving for the gift of new life we pray, Lord, for those uh, who bring in that life this day, that they may have healthy pregnancies and deliveries. We pray for peace in the Holy Land and throughout, throughout the area where Philip ministered in Gaza and Caesarea. We pray for all Israelis and Palestinians. Pray for the people of Ukraine and for the end of that war. Pray for the homeless and the hungry. And we also pray for those who are ill this day, especially with cancer. And today we have a very special uh, prayer for a very sp special prayer shawl today. The lady's name is Carol. Carol. And this prayer shawl is being dedicated to Carol, who unfortunately has breast cancer, breast and, cancer and, also and colon cancer. And so we pray for Carol, O Lord, our prayers and ask your blessing upon this prayer shawl, that it may wrap her with love and your presence and care for her and for those who watch over her. May you give her strength in this time of need. And if it be your will, your healing touch. We pray in Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we lift up all of our prayers and ask God's presence to be with all of us who are struggling at this time. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people. And what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually in the glory of thy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And turning back to uh, page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Page 360. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with thy whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty and ever living, Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace and love. God's peace with you, Betty. Thank you. God's peace be with you, Darren. So we have a couple of announcements for you at this afternoon. We are celebrating this evening uh, the blessing of the animals this evening. And if you'd like to bring any of your critters uh, this evening at 6 p.m., we'll be out here in the courtyard and I forgot to bring uh, every animal and their owner will be receiving a medallion 
for their little creature uh, that will be that has been blessed and will be given to each of those to put on their little name tag or however you want to identify uh, your little person little critter four-legged friend feathered or scaly whatever it might be horns we we might have a couple of cows tonight and some horses tonight so it'll be pretty exciting stuff Right, and right before that, if you'd like to join us for dinner, we're having a picnic as well outside to make it even more festive and more exciting uh, for all of those who are with us. Also, uh, as part of our 150th anniversary, we're cramming the crib with uh, mac and cheese that will help supply uh, Paducah Cooperative Ministry and the hungry uh, with uh, some staple food. Um, so mac and cheese, That's so as you go through Fletcher Hall, that's what the crib is out there for. We're helping children and families uh, in their time of need as well. Also coming up um, this week, or in, in, in a few weeks, we are going to be in, uh, having a, a, or a podcast uh, and book and authors, Sarah Holland and Beth Silvers here on October, Sunday, October 22nd at 1 p.m. right here in church uh, to celebrate how we talk to one another in faith and politics and how we can do that with opposing views, which goes directly into we as being Episcopalians trying to find the via media, the middle way of trying to find and hearing and listening to one another, something that's badly needed in our world today. Walk in love as God watched, walked over, watched over us and give us in, in love to each other through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand. We're turning on page 367 with our continued prayers this morning, this afternoon. Page 367, Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, 
Because of your obedience of your saints, you have given us an example of righteousness and in their eternal joy, a glorious pledge of hope of our calling. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed it is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give you thanks, O oh God, for all the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in calling of, of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For the, in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, O gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where, with Philip and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. And now as we celebrate God's grace around us, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught to us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for you, the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Wherever you are in your faith journey, all baptized Christians are welcome at this communion rail and at this altar. You'll have the option of drinking from the common cup or intincting or dipping your wafer into, a comp, into the intinction cup, whichever is more prayerful for you. I'll first distribute the bread and then the wine. All are welcome.
Jesus said, Abide in me as I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. John chapter 15, verses 4 and 5, verses 11, 8 and 9. Let us offer our prayer after Holy Communion, found on page 365, page 365. Please stand and let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us out to oh, the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding bless you this day, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go forth and be the church. Alleluia, alleluia. Have a wonderful afternoon and great week.